Hello, Buckeye Nation. This week, in anticipation of the massive matchup that we have coming up, I wanted to bring on a couple of special guests. This guest is an extra special one as he's the person who I have to thank for my Buckeye fandom. We dig into what it means to be a Buckeye fan, a bit of history around the game, and what we think things will look like on Saturday. And it's all after the intro. Welcome to Buckeye Football Fangirl. My name is Lisa and I'm the gal behind this channel and today I am joined by a very, very special guest, the man who I inherited my Buckeye fandom from. This is my dad. Welcome to Buckeye Football Fangirl, Dad. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I am so excited to have you on, especially knowing the big game that we have coming up this week. It is going to be a massive showdown between TTUN, or as some people are calling them, TCUN, those cheaters up north, and it's just going to be crazy. So I wanted to have you on just as we're leading up to this big game to talk a little bit about, you know, your Buckeye fandom and the game itself. So I'm curious, can you tell us all, how did you become a Buckeye football fan? I suppose I got it from my dad, who would be your grandfather. He was a fan, and sometimes my uh, mom, who would be your grandma, she used to say he would sit there and talk to the radio if things weren't going the way they should go. Oh my goodness, I do that to the TV screen now. You got that from your grandfather, and uh, now you do it to the TV, he used to do it to the radio. Remember, we yep. didn't have very many football games on when I was growing up. Yeah, I remember. We've talked about this in one of my earlier shows during my first season of Buckeye Football Fangirl. And um, I I honestly, I love listening to the game on the radio just because it makes me feel a little closer to, um, you know, when Grandpa used to listen to the games on the radio because they weren't broadcast on the TV. So I, that's something I, I still enjoy as a football fan, just yeah. listening to the radio. Sometimes I'll even turn them on instead of the TV broadcasters because the TV broadcasters drive me crazy a little bit. I'll find myself yelling at them more than the games sometimes. <laughs> there was, there was no... There was no night games back then. They really? were all they were all afternoon games. Every game would be over before supper time. Oh um, wow. And if it was a TV game, it'd be on in the afternoon. There was no such thing as double and triple headers and 16 football games on 12 different channels like it is today. Mm -hmm. You had uh, ABC, NBC and CBS. And they all carried games, but it was only one game every Saturday. So they had to pick and choose which games they put on. That's so different from how it is today. So I want to hear from you as well. What does being a Buckeye football fan mean to you? Well, uh, when football season comes, I always rooted for them. And my goal every year, of course, is that they'll become national champions and they were national champions in 1968. That was the first one I remember. I was big enough to remember it. And to be national champions in 1968, you had to play nine games in the regular season, and then you got invited to a bowl game. And of course, back then, if you were in the Big Ten, your goal was to go to the Rose Bowl, because the Rose Bowl was the game. And if you were Big Ten champion, then you got to play against the champion of the Pac-10, which it was the Pac-10 then, it wasn't the Pac-12. And then um, after all the games were over, then the media voted on who was the number one team for the year, and they would win a national championship based on that. And in 1968, they won uh, the, the Big Ten, in fact, I think they beat Michigan like 50-something to 10 that year. Ooh. I remember the final score, but um, they went out to the Rose Bowl, and they played Southern Cal, and Southern Cal had a, a running back named O.J. Simpson, which I think <laughs> most people have heard of. And I still remember that Southern Cal got the ball on the 20-yard line 
and he took a sweep around the right end and went 80 yards for a touchdown against Ohio State. Wow. And um, But that didn't win the game for him. Ohio State won the game, so they were undefeated for the whole year, and that was on New Year's. And then um, that next week they would have a, a media vote on who was supposed to be the national champion, and that was it. If there were two teams that were undefeated, well, then you had the media vote on who they thought was the better team. So there was always a lot of squabbling about who was the top team because, well, this team beat that team and that team lost to this team. So this team here should be number one and they should. So sometimes they had a lot of infighting. And I I think that's why eventually it led to the playoffs that they Mm -hmm. uh, system that they developed. That is kind of crazy, just having the media members vote on who is the best team. Because, I mean, we all joke about the transitive property now and, well, we beat them by this much and they beat them by this much, but we beat them by more. So that means we're the better team, right? But it doesn't always translate out that way when the games are played. So Mm -hmm. to have them vote and not actually the top two or, you know, however many teams play each other and see who wins on the field, man, that is, that is crazy. That's a different time. (laughs) Yeah, because the, the big bowls then were, the Rose Bowl was always on the afternoon. The Sugar Mm -hmm. Bowl was a big one. The Orange Bowl was a big one. In fact, back then, the Cotton Bowl was a pretty big bowl, and there weren't 40 (laughs) bowl games. And to be, to be bowl eligible, you had to win your conference. Times have definitely changed. How do you feel about us going to the 12-team playoffs next year? The last two or three weeks down the stretch, you probably won't have to worry as much about Ohio State getting in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Now, one slip-up and it's over, like we did last year. But with 12 teams, they should almost be guaranteed in the playoffs every year. Yeah, yeah. I think... Once you get to the playoffs, then anything can happen. That's right. That's right. At, you just got to get in. Look at Cardell Jones in 2014. Yep. You think about it. JT Barrett beat out, I um, can't remember the guy's name, um, but he was the offensive player of the <laughs> year for two years in a row there. And then mm-hmm. when JT Barrett came along, they moved him to wide receiver. And then when JT Barrett broke his ankle in the Michigan game. Then Mm -hmm. Cardell Jones came up. He was the third string quarterback. And everybody knows what happened that year. Yep, yep. That was a fun year. Can I give you one more? It's a sad Michigan-Ohio State story. Oh, sure. I already told you about 1968. Mm -hmm. One in Columbus, big time. And Mm -hmm. the next year... um, Michigan got their new coach. Woody mm-hmm. Hayes and Bo Schembechler had a rivalry there. Well, he mm. was a first-year coach in 1969, and that happened to me my first year of college. And I went to school in Illinois, and the day of the big game, the only way I could watch it was go down to the lounge where they had a TV. And mm. we thought Ohio State, because they hadn't, they hadn't lost in two years. Because mm-hmm. they defeated in 1968 and then in 1969 they were undefeated again we just thought oh they're going to show up and um, win this game well Michigan had other ideas and every break in the game went Michigan's way and I sat there and watched the first half and it was 24 to nothing at halftime ouch Ohio State hadn't even scored and so I was um, my I had a brother that was older than me that was also going to the same college, and they invited me over to play football outside. So rather than watch the game, I went over to his dorm, and we played football. And when we got back, the game had just ended, and they had a TV in their dorm. And I remember seeing the, the final score. I think it was 24 to 10. and. Oh ended their hopes of becoming national champions again because, of course, they didn't even get to go to the Rose Bowl. They didn't get to go to any bowl. Man, that is brutal. Who would you say your favorite player is this year? Am I allowed to pick two? Yeah, 
Absolutely. Travion, Travion and uh, Marvin. Yeah, hard to go wrong. Those are two solid offensive weapons right there. And Travion has really turned it on the second half of the season. These past couple games, he's just been burning it up on the field. He's more like what he was as a freshman. Yes, yes. It's great to see him playing healthy again. So now I'm curious to dig in a little bit more into the rivalry. What does the rivalry mean to you? Well, it isn't quite as um, upsetting if they lose now as it used to be. It used to be it'd take me a week to get over getting beat by Michigan and especially when Cooper was the coach there was years and years where we didn't win any games against Michigan I think mm -hmm. Cooper um, never understood what that game was being mm -hmm. from out of state and I don't think he ever understood that that game was the game and he would have a 9-0 record and then they'd play Michigan mm -hmm. and lose almost every year Ugh, that's brutal. So those years are definitely some of the rough years of the rivalry. How have you felt about it recently? Oh, the last 10 years, other than the last year and the year before, I've enjoyed it immensely because Michigan <laughs> beat them. And that's interesting, too, bringing up the last two years. You know, recently it surfaced all the allegations of TTUN cheating and that being why they've won these past two years. How does that make you feel about the rivalry? It makes me mad about the game we saw last year when we yes. were there in person. And what a disappointment walking back to the car after that game was over. And we had some loudmouth Michigan fans sitting right behind us just hooping and hollering and having a ball. Yeah. And now that this comes out that they've been, they knew the plays before Ohio State even ran them. It's no yep. wonder. That yeah, yeah. I feel the exact same way. I, it makes me so, so mad just knowing what they did. And, and the game when we saw it last year, too, it just felt so weird. It felt so off. Like, the team just, I don't know. It didn't look like the team we'd seen play the whole rest of the year. And now we know why. I think that's one of the reasons we know why. Yep. Yeah. So heading into the game this year, what's your take on the game this year? What do you think it's going to be like? I would venture a guess that Michigan players are hopping mad because he got suspended. That might be motivation for them. And Ohio State, the motivation for them is just look at the last two years. Yes. I think with, I think if Travion's healthy, I think we've got him because mm -hmm. we didn't have Travion last year. That's a very good point. I remember last year, you know, the run game seemed to be working and the team went away from it a little bit. But, yeah, we did not have Travion, and him him being back for the game this year will be huge. So what are you most looking forward to for the game this coming weekend? Just watching it. If they win, I'll be pretty happy. Oh, yeah. Do you have any uh, traditions or special plans that you're you're going to do for the game? Not really for the Michigan game, no. We used to have a tradition when Ohio State would be in the Rose Bowl. My mom would cook fish. And a lot of people, you know, for New Year's, they have sauerkraut and pork. Well, mm -hmm. we had fish and French fries. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, and then we'd watch the Rose Bowl. Yes, and I remember that's a tradition I grew up with as a kid, too. Well, it's been so fun chatting Buckeye football with you, Dad, talking about the rivalry and getting excited about this game that we have coming up this weekend. It is definitely going to be a good one. Thank you again so much for coming on with me, and go Buckeyes! Go Buckeyes! Go Buckeyes!